Okay, so section 2.1 is all about radicals. So we're going to start off with simplifying radicals. And to simplify, we're going to use these numbers to help us down the road. So our first row is our squared number. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, then 16, 25, 36, 4 will 3, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144, 169, 196, and 225. Now, if you think about it, a lot of these numbers should look familiar. I think back when you were in grade school and you had your times table and you had you know, your numbers here and your numbers here, these were the numbers that were on that diagonal. The square, the perfect square numbers were on that diagonal. Hey, look, it's like, like an arrow. Okay, um, so that's. Uh, they should look familiar. You should really know those. You should know everything up to 15. It's not unreasonable. Up to 100 is easy. You should know your 11 squared. 12 is pretty easy. Most people know it. 13 and 40 are pretty easy because it's like you flip them 169, 196, and then 225. Okay, cubes. We're not going to go all the way with this. Uh, one cube, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Then we have 64. Then we have 125, and I'm going to go with further than that. Yeah, let's go up to 216. That's about it. We don't need to go any further than that. You won't usually have big, big numbers. If you want to fill these in on your own, just for the heck of it, you can. It just, once again, cube is 7 times 7 times 7. 1 to the 4th power is just 1. Uh, then all we're going to do, if you look down, 4 times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. And then 9 times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. And then 16 times 4 is 64, times another 4 is... I think you should know that, 256. Uh, and then 125 times 5 again is... 5, 625 should be... Yeah, 625. You know me, I like to be perfect and never make a mistake in a video or in class. Okay, radicals. Yes, I'm going to say radical, dude, a lot. Uh, that's okay. Uh, this is the format of a radical. Okay. This number up here, okay, is called the index. Let me write that in. That little number out there, the little number we look at, is called the index. Okay. Now, very important. If there's no number there, which you've pretty much been dealing with since the first time you ever saw this thing, and most of us call this a square root. And for the most part, it is a square root, but it's not technically the right term. The right term is radical, okay? Because when there's no number here, we just assume that we're talking about 2, and therefore it becomes a square root. But that symbol is not the square root symbol. Okay, it is a radical. The two, we just don't bother writing because it's so common. We use it so often that they don't put a two there because we understand. It's kind of like with variables. We don't put a one here because everything pretty much is to the first power unless we mark it something different. And we don't put a one in front, okay, because we know it's one X. But if you want to put a one there, it's okay. These are numbers we don't put in because they're understood. The 2 is understood. So if you don't see it, it's squared. Otherwise, you might have something like this little 3 here. And the nth root of b. So this is called the cubed root of 27. Or you might call it the third root. And the fourth root and the fifth root. And usually that's kind of common because after cubed, we don't say the quartic or quintet. You know, we just say 4, 5, 6, 7. So usually we'll say square root, cube root, and then from there on we use numbers. But some people will still call us the third root. If you want to call it the cube root, it's okay. Now, the index number, if, if this is even, okay, so if it's the square root, you know, which we don't write in, or a 4, or a 6, or an 8, okay, if the index number is even and the number inside is negative, then there are no real solutions. Just imaginary. And we're not going to do that yet. We're going to be getting to that soon. We'll get into imaginary numbers. 
But right now, there is no square root of a negative number. Because remember, a square is a number times itself. And a positive times a positive is positive. And a negative times negative is positive. Therefore, there's no two numbers you can multiply together itself to get a negative. So this is always going to be, right now, you can't do it. Okay? It's not solvable. But if it's odd, like a 3 or a fifth root or a seventh root, and B is negative, then you can have a negative answer. Because if you think about it this way, negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 equals negative 8. So with cubes or fifths or sevenths, you can have a negative. You can take a, an odd root of a negative number. Okay, right, so here's what we're going to do. We always want to have our radicals simplified. Just like the fraction 3 6, we reduce to 1 half. It's the same concept. We want to reduce radicals. So, excuse me. We want the index n is as small as possible. The radicand, that's the thing inside, contains no factors other than 1. The radicand contains no fractions. Okay, I should have put that up there, so let's go back up here and put it. B is called the radicand. It's got a fun name. Radicand. Like ratatouille. Okay, uh, and then no radicals appear in the denominator. So we don't want to have that. So here we go. Square root of 100. You should know that off the top of your head. If you don't, you look at your chart. But the square root of 100 is 10. And notice this plus minus sign. If there's a plus minus out there, that means we put a plus minus in front of our answer. So the square root of 100 is plus or minus 10. Now, number two. There is a negative, but the negative is not inside. It is. This says... This means the opposite of the square root of 49. So we work backwards. We take the square root of 49 first, which is 7, and then we take the opposite of it. So our answer is negative 7. So you do the easy part, and then you just make it opposite. Okay, the fourth root of 80. Well, let's see. Fourth root. We go back to our notes, and we look at 4 right here, and 80, oh, really close, 81. But that means 80 is not on there, so it does not have a perfect square root, or fourth root. So we go back and look, hmm, what do we do now? 80 does not have, now the chart. We know, if we think about it, common sense, it's not going to be more than 3. It's going to be somewhere between 2 and 3, if we did it as a decimal. If you did that on your calculator right now, and you took the fourth root of 81, if you know how to do that on here, but if you did that, and you did the fourth root of 81, I mean of 80, sorry, math, root 80, you get the decimal 2.99, okay? But we're not doing them as decimals. We're not just typing as a calculator and doing decimals. But you can see why it's 2.99. It's really close to the answer 3. So what we do is we look for a number on our chart that goes into 80. So no motion sickness here. And all we do is start there and go backwards. Well, what do we see? Does 16 go into 80? So we take our handy-dandy calculator, and we do 80 divided by 16. And we find that, yep, it goes in five times. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this into two radicals. Now, I always suggest, personally, that you do the radical that's the perfect root. So I'm going to do the fourth root of 16 times the fourth root of 5. I'm just breaking it on down because 5 times 16 is 80 and the fourth root of 16 times the fourth root of 5 is also 80. Now we look at our handy dandy chart and we say the fourth root of 16 is 2. So this ends up being just a 2. And then we're just left with this fourth root of 5. Don't forget to write that little 4. It's very common mistake to write 2 radical 5 because you're used to writing radicals most of your life. And you forget that little 4. Don't forget it.
Okay, uh, this is blurry, but it is a 5, which makes the negative inside okay. Okay? Now, if you notice, we don't have the fifth power on here. So if you wanted to, you could think about it and go, okay, well, this is going to be still 1. And if we took 16 times 4 again, it'd be 64. And 81 times 3 again is 243. So obviously, this is 64, and this is 243, fifth root. Well, obviously, there we go. It ends up being a perfect root. Okay? So the fifth root of 243 is 3. And we put a negative. Because odd index numbers can come out as a negative. In other words, negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 equals negative 243. So it works out. Coming on down. Here we go. Uh, number 4. Number 5. The fourth root of negative 16. Okay? No solution. It is imaginary. And the reason is... This is even, and that's negative. And you can't take an even root of a negative number. Just can't do it yet. You'll learn how to do it. That's pretty cool and it's pretty easy. But you can't do it yet. Okay? 6 root of 192. Well, once again, we don't have all in there, 6 root. But if you went a little bit higher, you know, 64 times 2, you can do that in your head, 128. 243 times 3 is 729. So 192 is not on there. And like I said, 128 doesn't go, can't do it. 128 won't help you. So there is no way to break down the 6 root of 192. Six mass one ninety two. It ends up being two point four. It's between two and three. Okay, so it doesn't break down, and that's okay. Now this next part, easy breezy. You're going to use your calculator, okay, to approximate. You're going to get a decimal. So all you're going to do, like for number seven, is you're going to type in the square root second square root thirty five. About 5.9. Now, think about it. It makes sense. 35 is very close to 36, which is a perfect square. This is right under 36, so our answer should be just under 6, and it is. Uh, the third root is 16, negative 16. So we can take this third root, and if you don't know how to do it on these calculators, you can ask in class, but you just hit the number 3, then you hit the math key, and you go down to number 5, which is a radical sign with an X in front of it. And then you get negative key, the gray negative key, 16. And you get approximately negative 2.5. 4 through 71, again, you hit the 4 first, tell it what index. Then you hit math key, you go down to 5, enter, 71, enter, and that's 2.9. Which, once again, that makes sense. If you go back to your chart, it is right underneath there. So it works out. This is right underneath 81. We're pretty close. And that's why it's 2.9. And there's a cute little dirty math cartoon. Has you ready to play golf. And instead of yelling four and yells, square root of 16.